so April, I wanted to just um, ask you this morning, I'm so interested in um, all the deliverance that you're doing. And I wanted to know what first attracted you to deliverance? Like what drew you and how did you get involved in this? Yes, yes, yes. I, I just wanted to, to feel, I just feel led to share on how I got involved in deliverance, Jody. So I'm just thankful that we could come on and discuss this as, you know, just having the heart of Jesus, yeah. you know, for deliverance. Um, I realized that God had been setting me up my whole life. I just mm -hmm. didn't know that I needed deliverance. You know, um, I grew up, you know, Methodist, went to Baptist for a while and, um, you know, just slowly got introduced to the Holy Spirit. I was actually baptized by the Holy Spirit by reading the word because wow. people kept, people kept laying hands on me, trying to, uh, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I told the Holy Spirit, I'm like, I have to see it in your word. And all of a sudden, as soon as I prayed that the Holy Spirit honored it. <laughs> and it was so cool because immediately revelation hit me and I, I started praying in my prayer language. Wow. And, um, so then I went, you know, I used to, I had to repent of, of being a Calvinist, you know, I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was for today, the gifts were today, you know, there was apostles, there was prophets for today, I had to repent, and um, just the Holy Spirit was drawing me into deliverance, and I never knew that that's what I needed, um, but I realized, like I said, there were fingerprints of the Holy Spirit that he was drawing me into that, and, and everybody under the sound of my voice, that's why I do deliverance, it is the heart of the Father, I love it, it would have radically changed my life had I had it when I was like 10 years old, Oh my gosh, Jody. Um, I, yeah. I, just, I just have a passion to fight for people's freedom. And I know I'm rabbit trailing, but just such a deep hunger for me to equip on deliverance because um, little did I let, I know that God was setting me up to help me understand deliverance one step at a time, one baby step as I was getting intimate with the father. I had tons of trauma, tons of abuse that had happened almost my whole life until you know, like five years ago, as God saved me, um, I was teaching on the believer's authority. You know, I started teaching on that and I was teaching people how to take authority. Uh -huh. And uh, when, as I was teaching this, I gave people scriptures to go by. So God was starting to show me deliverance. And I, I didn't understand that at the time. You know, I was just trying to study deliverance. It was uh, teaching on Andrew Lomax, believer's authority. And so in my class, I taught someone to take authority and gave them scriptures on how to take authority and spoke identity. And so they put scriptures on authority every day. And by the time I got done teaching on the class, somebody was free of cancer. They themselves had decreed themselves by authority and were free of cancer. Wow. So I was like, okay, Lord, you taught me authority. And then um, God continued to, to take me on this journey. And um, I had an encounter with the Lord that I won't share because it's very intimate and personal. Um, but I, I told the Lord, I said, where is this in the word? I don't understand this encounter. I have to see it in the word. You know, you have to show me because that was my grid. I needed to find it in the word. And so he gave me Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where Jesus stepped into the fire with them. Wow. And, and as Jesus stepped into the fire with me, um, I realized that's when the deliverance started taking place oh, that wow. he pulled me out of trauma, out of abuse, out of abusive situation. He pulled me out. He redeemed my life. He saved me. And I, I didn't understand the vastness of deliverance at the time, but it was the beginning point for me that he cared me, cared for me enough and loved me enough to redeem my life. Um, from all the brokenness, the trauma, the rejection, um, I'm just being honest. There was Masonic in my background as me and my husband have a, a mandate to do Masonic deliverance ministry. Um, I didn't know that at the time. So my whole life had been, you know, chaos because of this. And God is redeeming that and restoring that sevenfold. But um, I got to keep answering your question. <laughs> I haven't forgot no, your question. It was kind of really the way that you got into deliverance was really out of necessity. Out like of necessity. The showed you that you he wanted to deliver you. Come on. And, yeah. and did you have him speak to you? Like when you were at a point where you were going to go somewhere like to nations, did you have him tell you something like that? 
Amen. Absolutely. So I always had loved God, but I kept having hindrance after hindrance after hindrance and wounds and trauma and severe abuse and just crazy stuff kept happening in my life. And I was trying so hard. I just like, I want to love the father. I want to know the father, you know, what is hindering me? I, I want intimacy with the father. I just wanted to walk in my calling because I knew that I knew that I knew that I was a child of God. I didn't understand why all this chaos was going on. So yeah. I was crying out to God in my process of getting to know him and getting to understand more about deliverance. I was saying, God, send me to the nations. I love the fact that you, Lord, want people to go disciple nations. I was reading in the word that I could call in the nations as my inheritance. So I was just crying out harvest, weeping for souls, crying and travailing for, for souls and, and just asking God, send me to the nations. I got to evangelize. I know this is the heart of the father. This is the heart of Jesus. And, and the Lord spoke to me and I'll never forget it. It changed my life radically. And God said, what kind of God would I be if I healed the nations and didn't heal you? And I thought, ow, whoa. <laughs> you know? I was like, Jesus, you know, I thought you were concerned about, you know, the nations, the nations. He is concerned about the nations, but number one, he wanted to restore me. So yeah. after he said that, I started experiencing like a three-year journey on deliverance at an each different level, like an onion. It just unpeeled. Like I said, I had to deal with occultic masonic in the background if you had masonic in your background it's actually a mandate that the lord put on me and my husband that's the type of deliverance that we do because who the sun sets free is free indeed and it actually when you have that in your background there's just trauma there's abuse there's addiction in the bloodline i necessarily did not fall into that but i'm just saying like it, it use a trail of lots of sickness and a trail of family chaos it's just awful it's just awful, but I knew God was going to dismantle this thing and That's that he so was, he was restoring us. Mm -hmm. So when did it shift for you? Like, so you're, you're getting into deliverance out of necessity you know, for yourself. At what point did the Lord show you that you're like actually good at this? Like you picture a kid, like going out mm -hmm. with a baseball mitt to go play baseball or something. And they're like, you know, missing everything. And all of a sudden they start kind of getting it. They're like, well, I'm, I'm kind of good at this, or I could do this. So at what point did you feel like that? Like, wow, this is actually something I feel called to do. I feel mm -hmm. anointed for or capable mm -hmm. of doing. Wow, man. I just feel the fire of the Holy spirit, the glory <laughs> fire. Thank you, Jesus. We just honor you, Holy spirit. Well, obviously number Lord, one, I, yeah. <laughs> We're going to pray some prayers before we get off of here because I just feel the breaker anointing. But I guess, number one, I couldn't do this without Jesus. I owe it all to him. Amen. Number two, I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, none of this was me. You know, the call to do deliverance, it's for everybody as a son and a daughter. If you're a son and daughter, you can do deliverance. But we have different mandates in deliverance. You know, right. some people are called to equip and train. Some people are called to do mass deliverance. Some people are called to do, you know, um, deliverance one-on-one -on -one at your church team or wherever it is. But uh, it's so funny how God called me into deliverance because I didn't know everything. And that's the the, the lie, the busting thing. I just want to to say for, for all the people that have interest in deliverance that are under the sound of my voice, that you don't have to know everything about deliverance. You know, when yeah. God called me into deliverance, I didn't know everything. You know, I just knew I was a son and a daughter and I had authority. Those were the first two foundations that he like groomed me in. The second thing that happened and everybody's beginning story, I know is different in deliverance. Everybody has a different way they do it, but it's, it still has some similarities, but um, I actually felt a mantle. People like to call it a mantle. People like to call it anointing, whatever it is. Uh, I just it fell on me on a service and I just felt the fire of the Holy Spirit, the glory of the Holy Spirit so strong. And I didn't know. I was like, whoa, what is that? Because I didn't have all these langos, you know, of church and, and mantles or anointing. People like to call it different things. And I, I, it fell on me and I just felt the, the fire of the Spirit. And I said, hey, God, you know, what is this? Um well, we just, it says internet connection unstable. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear me well. 
Um, we just declare your protection over the airwaves, Lord. But yeah, I just, um, a mantle fell. I felt the power of the Holy Spirit fall on me. Nice. And um, all of a sudden I had to go up front in ministry school and release a word of knowledge. And wow. um, it was right after that, that the, the fire of the Holy Spirit just touched my life for deliverance. And I immediately, the word the Lord gave me was pain jumping around the body. Now, anytime you have something jump around the body, when you're praying for somebody, it's a demon, mm -hmm. you know, point blank. It's a demon. You know, pain doesn't jump. Does it go from your head to your toes, to your knee, to your back? It's trying not to get out. You know, that's yeah. just yeah. is what it is. That's the truth. So I gave the word of knowledge. Somebody came up. I prayed for them. I broke the spirit of infirmity off of them. And I just wow. felt the Holy Spirit really strong. And I was like, okay, Holy Spirit. Um, we had to give a second word of knowledge, which is a revelation gift of just whatever the Holy Spirit reveals. We had to call it out of a meeting. And the Lord, a lady came up to me and the Lord said, you need to break a spirit of premature death off her bloodline. And I said, okay, you know, whatever, God, I, I don't have a grid for this, but I'm going to be faithful because I'm going to be obedient to you. Well, then I, I did that and she started crying. Mm. And she said, God just showed me the enemy had already designed to take my grandbaby out, but because you broke that curse off my bloodline of death, premature death in the bloodline, she's now wow. saved. Wow. And so I was taken back. You know, I didn't have all this deliverance training. I was just following Holy Spirit. Right. And that you was, you know, the main thing is being close to Holy Spirit. Well, then I got in my car with a friend, just starting in deliverance, having no clue, you know, what I was doing, just trying to be intimate with the Father, intimate with the Holy Spirit. And I put my hands on my friend because the Lord said to pray for her. And all of a sudden I touched her and all these demons started coming out. Incubus, succubus, you name it. It was the fire of the Holy Spirit. And they started coming out one after the next, after the next, after the next, after the next. And I had no training, just Holy Ghost and Jesus. <laughs> God. And I'm wow. like, what is going on, Lord? And, and then he would give me another name. And then he would give me another name. We sat there all night and did deliverance all night. God was just setting her free, setting her free, setting her free, setting her. And I'm not sharing that to embarrass anybody. I love this person. I honor this person. I'm not mentioning any names. I'm just saying that's how I started. I didn't have all this training that everybody thinks they have to have. It was Holy Ghost initiated, even though everybody's story is different in deliverance. But from that point on, the anointing of fire was so strong on me from the glory of God. Um, I would truly believe it was from that encounter in the Lord when he said, Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, how Jesus stepped into the fire, that that deliverance anointing just came stronger because of my kingdom assignment. Right. And when that happened, I, I ended up, it's, I know it sounds so weird, but I was young, I was hungry, you know, I was excited, but I ended up doing deliverance like 40 hours straight and not sleeping. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, that's silly. I know. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was so like, oh my gosh, this is the enemy tormenting people's life. I was so filled with compassion and mercy to set people free. Now that I knew this is what had hindered my life. This is what had caused things. And so I just went after it like a roaring lion, you know, I say I laugh at it now. Cause like, I would definitely not do that now, but right. the whole spirit was just moving. Um, and so I laugh, you know, as I did that and, and kept asking the Holy Spirit, who needs free, who needs free? I immediately thought of all my family. My heart was filled with, oh my gosh, I have to share this with everybody. So yeah. then I came home and I started doing deliverance on my dad. I <laughs> started, I mean, I say that with all honor and humility. I love my dad. Dad, if you're watching, I bless you. You're awesome. But I was like, <laughs> I got to share this with my dad. You know, when you find something good, like a candy bar. You want to share it with everybody you love. So I immediately just let the fire of the Holy Spirit um, minister to my dad. And then I started doing, you know, inner healing. If mom, if you're on here, started doing deliverance with my mom. And it just became a passion because I That's thought, oh, my gosh, why did not somebody explain deliverance to me, you know, 20 years ago? I'd always heard a Christian can't have a demon. I've always heard that, you know, had no grid for they had in your soul, your spirit saved but you can have demons in your soul and soul wounds and hurt. There's so many avenues. I'm going to cover that on the class of deliverance, but yes, a, a Christian cannot be possessed by a demon, but they can absolutely be oppressed by a demon. And, you know, I just, I, nobody ever taught me that, you know, nobody had explained that to me, 
So, and, you know, you go in a third world country and when they get baptized and healed, the deliverance actually usually normally takes pace because they have a grip for that. Right. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I just started, started um, in deliverance by the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God upon my life, because, you know, at, at different times, he just pushes them out. It's the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's his anointing. I don't have to call out any spirit, but that's as he chooses, you know, other times. I have thus, since I did that study deliverance, you know, spent three years studying deliverance, spent three years getting more free, making it a passion of mine to set as many people free as possible. That's so good. So mm -hmm. do you, can deliverance be taught or imparted, um, you know, and tell us about the class that you have coming up where you're actually going to be teaching these things. Absolutely. Um, that's how I walked into deliverance. It was an impartation from somebody and the Holy Spirit also um, breathed on that. And, and also I want to say as you activate somebody in deliverance and an impartation spiritually takes place, like um, it actually allows the Holy Spirit to be able to move in your life if you step out and use that impartation. You know, just like... Right just like when you have Paul and Timothy, you know, they laid hands on people. You actually actually use what you, I think that's why the grace come on, came on me, just like it can under anybody under the sound of our voice. A grace can come on you because you're willing to use what you were given. And that, right. was, that was one thing that I had my face set before Jesus, like a flint to set as many people free as possible that God would bring to me because of what, had happened to my bloodline. You know, it gave me that attitude of the gates of hell will not prevail against my friends, against my family, against the people that I'm in acquaintance with, against the people that I love. And and, and John 836, 836, who the sun sets free is free indeed. It was like embedded in my life. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's so good. Mm -hmm. So um, I love the part of the compassion. And I do see mm -hmm. that in you. And our story is interesting, even how we met around deliverance. So um, when you are doing that out of a heart of compassion, this is, it is signs and wonders. Deliverance is signs and wonders. So when you're going on and you're, um, you're teaching about deliverance and you have a class coming up um, shortly, are you going to be like imparting? Because that's one of the things that I love about taking your classes or teaching with you or doing things with you is you care about the people. So you're not only teaching them, you're ministering during your classes. So tell amen. us what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I just felt it was a time and season. I've never shared a lot of this stuff live because I didn't feel led. But I know that God's, uh, the mandate that he's put on my life is to help, help people set free. Now, I love the glory. I have glory stories podcasts. I have a decree podcast that you can sign up for. But part of kingdom work is deliverance. And so that's why I'm getting ready to teach this class on what is deliverance? Why do I need deliverance? How do demons get in? What's the doors I can close to get demons out? And impartation, activation on deliverance, because people don't understand. Once you're saved, which is the most important, the next thing that can hinder your call is lack of inner healing and deliverance. Right. And that's why I have such a passion to not see people walk and be hindered by the lack of inner healing and deliverance. Yeah, that's so good. It is so much easier to live free. So you have not only experienced that in your life, I mm -hmm. have as well. Um, is there a time when you're like done, you know, or do you think this is like something that we're going to be doing, continuing to get inner healing and deliverance? What do you think about that? Um, most of the time, it's been a process for me. Um, most of the time, the people I minister to, it's been a process. I love what, what Derek Prince said, because I studied a lot of his material um, great deliverance minister. If you want to go online, watch any of Derek Prince's videos. It is amazing. Um, I just, I loved his teaching and it really showed me that a lot of times he said, I love this, that he doesn't think most people can handle getting free all at once. Now it does happen. Okay. But he said he did not think most people could handle everything coming out at once. I know a few people, maybe one out of a thousand where they had this radical transformation and every demon they ever had came out. But most of the time, for me, it's been a three-year, four-year process. Um, for a lot of people I know, 
you know, yes, we accelerated and that's why I'm, I'm doing the type of Masonic deliverance that me and my husband do is because we want to accelerate because we don't want you to have to pay the price. We want to make it shorter, but I think Holy Spirit knows when we're ready. Right. Yeah. Some of that is like strongholds in our mind, renewing the mind to the word. So deliverance right. is so multifaceted. You know, anytime you empower a lie, you empower a demon in your soul. Right. Yeah. Anything scripturally, like the scripture about the wheat and the tares, yeah. you know, like pulling things up slowly so that the enemy can't come back in because the mindsets have to change. So I love right. how you teach on that. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, April, is anybody hopeless? Like if absolutely. somebody really wants to be free, is anyone too far gone? No, absolutely not. And I would say if you're on here and you're under the sound of our voice and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you know, I couldn't have done deliverance or experienced deliverance without that aspect of it. So just say, Jesus, come into my heart, make yourself real to me. I believe you died on that cross. I want to experience the deliverance um, that you have for me. And I'm just going to pray for, real quick. I just feel the Holy Spirit really strong. So Lord, I just declare and decree right now, I lose freedom over people's lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you that spirits of trauma, rejection, shame, guilt, condemnation right now are coming off right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus, I just command it up and out. I see him going right now. Wow. And right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just break generational curses under everybody under the sound of my voice right now in the name of Jesus. I break the trauma and shock of betrayal. I see it right now. The Lord is breaking that off with you. You may cry. Lord, I just thank you. You're loosening their mind right now, right now from strongholds right now. I just decree and declare minds are being loosed right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. Whoa. Lord, I just declare freedom for the people that are on here and they're hungry and they want to know the freedom of God. Lord, I just bless them. I impart to them right now in Jesus name. Lord, I just thank you that you're setting me. I just release that deliverance fire, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to set the captives free right now. Whoa, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and decree ever everybody that watches this broadcast, I declare that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Wow. Right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I just see things coming off. Loneliness. Mm. spirits of fear we command them up and out right now in the name of jesus whoa right now every spirit of fear thank you holy spirit thank you lord thank you, holy spirit and that's another thing me and my, my husband have a passion for is uh, people that have been fragmented to have them be you know integrated back in people don't talk about that it's just when you've been through the sex trade industry or severe trauma in your life, Holy Spirit can bring you back in a true identity. And these are things that I, I think the Lord is switching as the mandate of the church. We need to be able to help people walk through this process of getting whole. Yeah, that's so good and so true. Um, and people have been through intense trauma and you know, the Lord made us like that so we could survive. You know, you know, I myself have been through a lot of inner healing and deliverance and you know, I needed it. And it is, I agree, it is a process and we need to keep pushing for that. So if people want to be free and they surrender to Jesus, he oh will set them free. So um, tell us about your class. Like what time is it? How can people yeah. register and yeah. uh, join in the class? I'm really excited about it. <laughs> it's so funny because I've had this passion to do the class for about three or four years, but I had to wait until I felt the wind of the Holy Spirit. You know, I never want to get ahead of the Lord. And I really knew now was the time and season. So I'm actually teaching it this Saturday. It's two hours from 12 to 2 Eastern time. All you have to do is PayPal me, Cash App, because that's what people seem to use the most. It's $50. And um, I, I add you to a private Facebook group. And I'm going to be going into the details that God taught me with Holy Spirit on how to do deliverance and different aspects of deliverance and explain teaching, just deep teaching on deliverance. That's so good. And I know April that you have studied a lot. Your husband, Richard has studied a lot. You guys have went through so much material and it's so amazing that you're willing to share it. Yeah. And um, I just wanna say too, thank you from the body of Christ because 
deliverance is such a gift to have, you know, someone that just goes after it and is willing to share, willing to impart, mm -hmm. willing to teach like that. It's really a blessing and I'm uh, personally so blessed by you and Richard to know you guys, to be friends with you and what you're doing for the body of Christ is amazing. Amazing. Oh. So thank you guys so much for what you do. Oh, it's so, it's all Jesus. It's Holy Spirit. What's your PayPal? It's April Stutzman. Um, I can post the link after we're done with the broadcast, but um, I just say Jesus, Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It's a kingdom right. mandate. You know, and that's why I always have to point it back to Jesus, because I feel like as a disciple, I can't pick and choose what part of the kingdom that I do or don't do. You know, I love the glory. I love healing. I love miracles. Absolutely love it. But the other aspect of it, one third of the gospel and the atonement is setting people free. And I just, man, it's the heart of the father to see people walk into freedom you know, that's my favorite part about deliverance ministry is to watch somebody go from a stuck point in their life. And we're yeah. going to talk about symptoms of being demonically oppressed and cycles of being demonically oppressed, but to actually watch somebody go from that, teach them how to do deliverance on themselves. Cause I don't want anybody to depend on me. Some of the deepest times of inner healing and deliverance were with the Holy spirit for me, even though people helped, you know, came alongside of me and I went and had deliverance and stuff like that. But the deepest times was, was with Holy Spirit. So that's my passion is to teach and equip a generation to do deliverance on themselves and be able to do deliverance on others. And that's why I'm teaching this class. So many people are afraid to start deliverance. They, they don't know where to start. And so they do nothing. And I want to get you from being freaked out about it to understand your child, your daughter, you walk in the kingdom, you have authority. And we're going to talk about the teaching of this in my class, but to say, you don't need to know everything about deliverance in to start it. You just have to have a relationship with father, God, be in the kingdom, know your identity and step out with the Holy spirit. That's great. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. And everybody encourage you all to sign up for the class. Um, on Saturday, it's going to be good. And those of us like on the West Coast, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Time zone difference. Yes, it is 12 p.m. Eastern. But um, I'm just, I'm just so excited. Just more than anything, is to get people activated in deliverance. You know, we'll be going over a few protocols in deliverance. We'll be talking about, you know, what are aspects of how demons get in you know, how they affected me. So we're going to be really teaching line upon line, but I will also be praying um, deliverance mass over everybody that's in the class because you can't teach on it without doing deliverance. But I have to say, if you're on here and you've never had deliverance ever, you have to have deliverance to appreciate it. You just have to. There's a whole new level that you go to when you experience, just like God said to me in the beginning of my process, when I started inner healing and deliverance with the father, what kind of, what kind of God would he be if he healed the nations, but he didn't heal each one of y'all individually? Whoa. Yeah. So I want you to receive that in your spirit. Cause I just felt the Lord just breathe on that. Understand that he wants to heal each one of you individually. So when you go to the nations to disciple and do stuff for the kingdom, you don't have a landing strip for the enemy. Right. Whoa. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, and it is, again, so much easier to live free. Like you might not know, like the things that you battle with mentally, the things that you stumble over, you might not realize that that's actually spiritual, that there's actually a spiritual battle going on. You might just think, oh, that's just how I am. My whole family <laughs> like that. We've been like that for generations. We all get angry. We all do this. When it's like, that's not how it has to be. You can break free from those things. Yeah, and, and there's a part of restoration in the process you know, I truly believe God has taken us from just, you know, one deliverance freedom to bloodline restoration, where the mm -hmm. strong man that has went down generations to that is broken off and that we're transitioned into the glory because the Bible says the sins of the father are passed down four generations. That's a hundred years. And, you know, I like to explain generational stuff as just like you go to the doctor and they ask you to please check off everybody in your bloodline that has this or that or heart disease or stroke, all that stuff. They want you to check the box. I like to explain when you do that in the natural, 
It's also in the spirit realm. The things that have went down in your bloodline, they're on your DNA. They're on right. your DNA. You actually have to cleanse the DNA and apply the blood of Jesus Christ on your DNA to allow those doors to be closed. And, you know, I, I'm not here to debate that, you know. God set my life free from Masonic curses, so it radically changed my life. If you don't believe that, I'm sorry. But, you know, the way I like to explain it, too, is if you haven't, if, you know, Jesus paid for everybody's healing on the cross, but they're still sick people. Jesus prayed to redeem our bloodline, but we still have to go through deliverance. We actually have to apply the blood of Jesus, just like Jesus died for everybody, but not everybody's saved, even though right. we're all salvation so I, that's just something i'm really passionate about you know generational deliverance saved my life i will share more of how it saved my life in the deliverance class but it, it's getting your soul healed and getting the generational stuff out because we want a thousand generations we want that generational blessing to be upon our kids to help transition our kids our grandbabies into glory so they never have to go through any of the stuff whoa that we have to go through yeah. And I really, I really think that's the mandate that God is really what I try to focus on when I'm doing deliverance sessions. We do it on Zoom is transitioning the bloodline. You know, we don't have a, a formula we follow. We trust Holy Ghost, but there is very specific prayers that he's given us um, yeah. to help us transition people's bloodline and get in the glory. You know, <laughs> that's what we want. The intimacy, all this is so that the more free you get, you That's enjoy right. that intimacy with the father. Yeah. And the Holy spirit flows through you more and more and people can feel the father's love, mm -hmm. you know, that compassion and love that he has for all of his children. Like if one of our kids was sick, we would want them mm -hmm. to be healed. If something was wrong with them, we would want to try to help them. So does father God, yeah, you know, he's on. made a way he's made a way. Salvation is the beginning. He yes. wants us healed, set free and delivered in the name of Jesus. And so prosper in soul. You know, just remind yes. me, the Lord said, I want you to prosper, even as your soul prospers. Well, your soul yes. prospers by inner healing and deliverance. That's how yes. it prospers. That's so good. <laughs> well, um, April, thank you so much um, for just talking to us about deliverance, for teaching the class on Saturday. I'm really excited to be um, at 9 a.m. my time on the <laughs> <laughs> bright and early on California. <laughs> California time y'all I missed it like last week because I was got confused about the time difference so <laughs> but I was briefly so we're excited to do that um mm -hmm. and to join you thanks so much for teaching on this and again what a gift you are to the body of Christ oh thank you so much and if you haven't signed up please sign up please sign up please sign up I want to see you doing deliverance I want to see you activated I want to teach you some protocols some ins and outs um of deliverance somebody said is that central time and so it's an it, it'll be 12 eastern time for me and jody's is on california time which is like 9 a.m pacific yeah. time <laughs> bright and early um so yeah if you haven't signed up please sign up the lord you know i i haven't taught on this even though it's been on my desire for a year i've taught it in like mass group settings at a church and also in my home but i really felt like this is a mandate online because god wants you to be doing the kingdom with him and i just want to share the school of hard knocks you learn so much as you're doing so many dif different deliverances so i just want to share that what i've learned <laughs> amen so excited all right thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I just bless everybody as we get off of here under the sound of our voice. And, Lord, just thank you for that they're hungering for the kingdom. Thank and, you. Lord, and I just declare that any deception that's on their minds be broken off right now. Whoa. And, Lord, you just reveal to them the truth, the truth about deliverance. That's all right. We're getting off here anyway. But I just I just want to bless them. Just sign up. I'm telling you, God needs God needs you. You can, you can grow and, and watch yourself step into the mandate of the kingdom of setting people free. And yep. that, that compassion and that mercy of Jesus Christ will just well up in you. So be blessed, guys. And thanks, Jody. Thank for, you, April. Love you. Love you. Love you.